Rapmatic presents Battle Code, the most intriguing battle rap podcast impacting the culture. What's happening here? So you're now tuned in your boy Loda Lux. Low with someone I'm rolling up, huh? Ace is slick fast, nigga. Hollis Phil and H-Man slick. Hear me. You're now tuned in the Battle Code on Rapmatic, huh? So get this work. Brace yourself and don't miss out on a cultural revolution. Today in the studio, we have arguably a legend before his time, known for his abstract rap style, yet crazy antics, consistently dropping music and booking battles simultaneously, representing Los Angeles, California. Give it up for Daylight in the building. (laughs) Daylight was popping. You know, uh, the population. Really? Yes, yes. Good to, good to have you on the show. Most definitely. Um, let's get right into it. Um, let me start. I'm going to take it back. Before uh, the hype, I guess, what were your goals in the in, in battle rap, your goals in the game? Um, battle rap? Uh, I don't necessarily think I had battle rap goals. Like, okay. um, I never even wanted to battle rap. Like, it was nothing. It was something that I never really cared for. I actually got tricked into battle rap. Um, prior to battle rap, I had a very big buzz, but it was a MySpace buzz, but I had like a very big buzz where I was getting like millions of plays and stuff like that. And, um, uh, there was an event in LA called the pit. The pit was kind of like our smack, like, right. It was where everybody was battling it. And I remember I used to be one of those rappers that's like, man, you battle rappers ain't going to never make it. Like, <laughs> right. like battle rapping is bad for your career. I was one of them. So, um, the pit was ran by my man sticks, uh, big shots out to Y city sticks. Right. And um, uh, I grew up playing ball with Sticks. So when I first went to the pit, uh, Sticks was like, yo, bro, sign your name on this list. This is a get in free list. So I'm like, oh, hell yeah, nigga, I'm in there for free. In the middle of the night, Sticks calls me to the stage, like daylight to the stage. So I'm like, oh, shit, my boy's about to give me a shout out. Right. He whispers in my ear, yo, I need you to battle. Wait, what, what you talking about? <laughs> He goes, well, one of the people backed out, dog, you my dog, dog. We grew up from the sandbox, dog. Just just do me this one favor. Remind, I never battled a day in my life. I look to the left. Guess who's on the left? Disaster. Wow. <laughs> you know how he breathing all aggressive and, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, it's over for me. Right? But remind, this is my very first battle. So um, I'm like, fuck it. I go off. You know, fuck it. I do it. And um, I actually happened to spit like one of my old verses or something, and it hit, you know. And you you battled before. Not, I don't think nothing in the world feels better than a crowd reaction. Right. Nothing like I that it's like two things that feel like that: sex and crowd reaction. Like those are two things that feel exactly like that. Right. And I think when I got my first crowd reaction, it was like a first. It was like a hit of cocaine. I was like, oh shit, I like this. When does this happen? He was like, just every weekend. And then every weekend, before you know it, I was there. I know you have your true Daylight fans, but people who know of you, does it bother you that they don't take you seriously? Oh, no, no, no. Because most of the people that don't take me serious, they're not even to be worried about. They're like simulation programs. Like, I notice the people who don't take me serious are people who stand up at four in the morning waiting for new Jordans to come out. Like, those are the people who don't take me serious. And I don't really care about them right like those are the people that should never even be taken serious in the first place but as far as like effect and change like a lot of the things i did in my career i kind of look at my life like the bible i try to warn people about things that's going to happen so boom i'm the first rapper with a big ass face tat i'm the first fucking rapper that's talking crazy i'm the first rapper that's doing wild ass things for views and everybody hated me for it look at the next wave of hip-hop right that's all that's happening right new york Daylight, you're wildin'. We don't fuck with the wild shit. The biggest rapper in New York right now is a fucking dude with colorful hair, face tattoos, doing wild shit. I just try to warn people about the storm and nobody listens to me. And now they see. Daylight tried to tell us. So, you know, it's not about change. You know, I realize, like, there's always been that one dude in the street with a radio that's like, this is what's going to happen. And what happens? Times Square just walk right by him. And then sure enough, it happens and everybody's fucked. So that's kind of like what it is. I don't really I don't really mind when people come back with like, oh, he did this or he did that. It's just like I know at the end of the day, like before the shenanigans, you got to think like before I did any wild things, you know, uh, it was a daylight. I am spawn video. 
right. you know it was daylight one mic video i mean daylight two mics video black mormon like so it's not like i started off doing shenanigans like i started off doing mm-hmm. a lot of positive stuff and trying to make change but we live in a world where people only respect numbers like we got this whole number thing right people don't respect like you could be a nobody with information and people are like oh i got one follower i don't care what he's talking about but when you when your numbers is up, people's eyes are tuned in. People are listening. That's why on your phone it says followers, right? How many followers you got? How many right. people you got that's willing to listen to you? So I re- I realize like I can't make change from. I can't make change if nobody's listening. It's very easy to write bars. Like it, right. that's easy. It's not the hard part. It's hard to pull a shenanigan and not crack. Right? It's like acting. It's like you like right. I be in the mirror prepping this stuff. It may seem wild, but I be in the mirror like, okay, pull your pants down right here <laughs> and make sure you don't pull them all the way down so your nuts don't come out the back. But you feel like it's a method to it. You feel me? So I like I know, all right, so like in my battle career, I go antic, bar, 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 antic, bar, 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 bar battle. But how do you antic. decide who like what answer you're gonna do against which opponent and all that? It depends on the person. It depends on the lead. Um, it depends on who's on the card. Uh, most of the times I did shenanigans, it's with, like, things that don't really matter. Like, you know, nobody cares about Daylight versus Rome. I mean, Rome, big, big shouts out to Rome. He's doing very big things with Jock the Mike, but nobody really cared about Daylight versus Rome. It don't matter in our world, right? When And when I say our world, like, I'm going to make this known. The black world, like, right. the black side of Battle Rap. It don't matter. You feel me? We all know if it ain't URL on our end. If it ain't URL, nigga, it don't count. So... So it's simply it's about the view. Yeah, it's, it's kind of about the, the, the scenario of the battle. Like, if... If I feel in my heart like I need to make this battle get seen by people who not going to look at it, then that's what I'm going to do. Because okay. most of the battles I did antics in, these are battles that people would have never watched, ever. They don't care about them, but I force people to look. Right? When they're on you versus math, people yeah. would watch that battle. Yeah, but see, even with me versus math, like, you know, I laid on the floor, I did the whole sleeping thing. But like, like people don't feel that, that battle was shot at the YouTube theater, right? Right. And it was edited. People don't. People didn't get to see the raw battle. Like Math didn't prepare for the battle. Like he choked every couple of bars. They just mm-hmm. edited the final draft and cut the chokes out. So that's why I did the whole sleep thing. I'm like, yo, dog, you slept on me, dog. You didn't even prepare for the battle. I'm going to sleep. You want to sleep on me? I'm gonna okay. sleep on you. Has that been um said? No, nah, nobody oh, knows this. Okay, but like, okay. yeah. So after the battle, you know, Math chopped it up with the editors, and they. You know, this editing, dog. They oh. chopped out all the chokes, split. What about the water? All right, Matt. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> Matt poured water on me first. Oh, okay. See, and, and I think people didn't watch the battle. They just heard about it, right? When you watch the battle, you know, I was kind of rapping aggressively. And Matt was like, yo, back up, son. And then I'm like, nah. And he like, yo, back up. And he like flung the water on me. Oh, okay. And then I'm like, yo, like, I don't, you, you feel me? Like, I'm crazy, too. <laughs> Like, I'll pour water back on you. And then I, so it was like retaliation. It wasn't like I was just like, yo, I'm going to just pour water on the shoes. It was like, yo, you pour water on me, I'm going to pour water on you. So, okay. you know. Um, I, I won't harp on, uh, on the answers, right. but I had to I like about I it. like it. It's fun. It's actually funner than Battle Rap, to be honest. It is. But then it's like certain, that's what I'm saying today, when people was, are reacting, they're just like, like, you know, like, yo, what, you know, what the hell, dude? Like, you know, of course, the ultimate one that we don't have to touch. So we much. can touch it. I'm with it. But the, the, the taking the shit one, why? But this is the thing. <laughs> like, look, people got to understand this, right? This is a method to the madness. First of all, I never took a shit. Okay. No boo boo came out of my butt. <laughs> let's get that, let's get that off the okay. gate. No actual turds came out. Okay. I just pulled my pants down. Okay, cool. That's cool. But the best part about it is people don't even understand the method to the madness, right? I act like I was going to take a boo-boo in a headless horseman costume. So there's a guy on stage with his pants down that you don't even know who it is. So every social media points and posts a picture with a guy with no head. Right. How do you know it's me in the first place? That's the real question. Okay. And guys, niggas know what my butt look like. <laughs> niggas like, no, I know that's daylight, son. I know that nigga ass. Then that makes you kind of oh, like right. super falls, right? Right, right. Um, let me ask you this. I recently saw an interview um, where you um, did some, said something about King, about King of the Dot mm-hmm. and how you felt like they owed you an apology. Yeah. Um, let's revisit that a little bit, but then mm-hmm. I want to ask you a question about that. Yeah, all right. 
Um, so pretty much, uh, I feel like who I am, I play an important role in the survival of King of the Dot even being able to be mentioned with URL, right? URL is most definitely a dominant lead, and it is battle rap. Whether we accept it or not, URL is battle rap. Smack DVD is the reason we all do this. And where battle rap has gone, which is, has gone back to the urban side, for a minute it took a, a, a stray away from the urban side. You had Grind Time, you had World Rap Champions, right. Scribble Jam. You know, it went to that more like backpacker freestyle side. And then it came back our way. And in the process of it coming back to the more urban or more street style battle rap, I feel like I played a very large reason, or I, I am a big reason why why uh, King of the Dot is e even able to compete with URL when it comes to those type of battles. For example, I brought the street style and the more like URL kind of format style battles to King of the Dot. Which battle in particular? I would say me and Rich Dollars, me and Charlie oh, Clips, okay. you feel that me? Me and Chilla Jones, okay. me and... The list goes on of all the big things I've done for King of the Dot. Okay. All right. So other than that, um, you know, so when the me and disaster thing happened, uh, like I said, you know, um, they came to me. They asked me to, who I wanted to battle. I told them I wanted to battle Mickey Fats because Mickey Fats is my brother. And, um, you know, we had like a lot of things planned on what we was going to do. Come to find out, they called us and told us that the main person, which is Nakaya, I'm not afraid. I'm a snitch. I'm not afraid to say names, nothing, Nakaya. Okay. Um, uh, you ain't gonna do nothing. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they, they called and told me, well, Nakaya's backing out, mm -hmm. you know, um, so we're not gonna be able to fund the battle. So I hit Mickey, like, oh, dog, it's over. So Mickey, like, what can we do? I'm like, well, I don't know. Let's talk to him and see what they do. So they come back with another offer. And then they, they pretty much tell me that they can't pay Mickey. So I'm like, oh, shit, well, you know, damn, what y'all wanna do? And I'm like, Mickey, this is what they saying. So I'm like, all right, fuck it give mickey half of what y'all gonna pay me so we can make this happen so i took the way short end of the stick just okay. to make the battle happen because i knew what we could have done for hip-hop okay at that i just want to pause right there i was told from before that is that true that you do that though regularly or, or you have yeah. in, in the past yeah i've like, done that numerous times like yeah anything for a battle i've done that numerous times because like i tell y'all like i i I eat in a lot of different ways outside of battle rap. And sometimes it's not about the bread for me. It's more about the opportunity to catapult myself to make more bread in the future. Right. Like I always think about the long run. It's not about the right now. Like, so, that um, should be a hint for female battle For battle female battlers, battle. think right. about the future. Like it's never about today. Um, um, so yeah, so, uh, so yeah, like I said, I took the short end of the stick just to make the battle happen because I knew it can catapult me in a lot of different aspects. Um, so come to find out at the end of the day, one of the reasons why all of these things happen is because they end up booking Disaster and Hollow as a one rounder surprise battle. So pretty oh. much they took out of our pocket to 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 have a surprise battle. Okay. Now, the thing is, like, you know me, I'm one of the I'm not even going to say one. I am the best promoter in battle rap. I promote battles like no one else, like. I can have you hype to see Daylight versus Joe Smo. Right. It don't even matter. You be hyped. Like, who Daylight? But I don't know. Daylight like, got me hyped. So, you know, I just felt like from a from a company, you shouldn't have lied to me like that. Right. You feel me? You should have told me, yo, Daylight, you are bread and butter. You feel me? This is what's going on. We're going to make sure you good on the next one. Yada, yada, yada. But they didn't do that. And I feel like when I got to the stage, I was so, like, mad at them that I couldn't even focus on the battle. Oh, okay. And I try to tell people, like, I'm growing as an individual, but I'm still from Watts. Like, don't ever let none of this gimmick shit fool you. Right. I'm still from the projects. I'm still an animal. I'm like Bruce Banner right now in Avengers. Like, like every night that thing come out, like, I'll be like, come on, Hawk, and no, no. And my hood side be doing that, like, no. And, and like, that's how I felt on the stage. Like, Hulk was trying to come out. And I'm like, nah, nigga, not here. I'm not going to let you hit these white people. Nah, don't. Okay. Do. And that's how I felt on the stage. So that's why in the middle of the battle, I rap some whatever shit. I try to stay on some positive shit. You feel me? I'm rapping about Mother Nature and just stuff that could keep me sane as an individual. And that's why I call Tom. Like, yo, Tom, hurry up. Get out of here. Just get out of here before okay. you do something. And I bounce. But, yeah, so I just feel like they shouldn't have lied to me. And I feel like they need to explain to the world what happened. And... 
if they do that, I'll battle on King of the Dot. If they can't do that, then I don't plan on battling over there anymore. 